All right, let's, ready? Is it on? Is it on? All right, so we're going to call the meeting of the Finance Committee to order on July 5th, 2018. Would the clerk please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman O'Brien? Present. Um, Alderman at large, Kelly is here. Alderman at large, Laws? Here. Alderman Karen? Here. Alderman Ga Harriet Gathright? Um, let's note that Alderman Gidge is also here. And we have uh, Dan Kuken, who is the purchasing manager. Is there any public comment? That's the first item on the agenda. No one? Communications. Alderwoman Kelly. Communication from Dan Kuken, purchasing manager, regarding 2018 sewer re replacement, Harvard Street, with a value of $692,905. And Mr. I think Mr. Du oh, excuse okay. me. Go ahead. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept place on a file and award the contract to Northeast Earth Mechanics in the amount of 692905 Funders are available in Department 169 Wastewater. And we have Mr. Dukran here, who is the city engineer, to answer any questions. Uh, but maybe give us a brief... Over, it is a $692,000 item, so maybe give us a, a brief overview on the project. Okay, I'll give you, Mr. Mayor, one minute. Okay. Uh, Steve Dukin, City Engineer. Uh, this is uh, another one of those projects that we have to replace very old uh, sewers in the inner city, um, dating back as early as 1900. It's unreinforced concrete. We are lucky that it's lasted uh, that long. Um, so, just to let you know, we had put out a bigger project early in the year, and the bid came in. We had a single bid. It was way too high, and we couldn't afford to award it. So what we decided to do is break up the projects into little bits, and this is the second one of those little bits, even though it's a $600,000 $600, project. And um, so it's on Harvard Street, and it, um, it's about 830 feet of pipe that we have to replace, include, um, including all the structures, the catch basins, the manholes, those are old and deteriorated as well. And that's, the, that's what this project is about. Questions, comments? Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question would be, is this still a, like a single combination system? Uh, or are we ever going to get into splitting it where stormwater won't be mixed with the sewer water anymore? Okay. So in this particular location in Crown Hill, it is a combined sewer. And um, we don't have a program currently to continue any extensive sewer separation. Um, it is not really the city's intention. We don't have that in the uh, program as a budget. Um, our sewer separation program that started in the 90s and went into a couple of years into in the 2000s um, <clears throat> became unaffordable, and we went back to the EPA, renegotiated the, the CSO program, and got a hold and treat system, um, uh, system that we have completed. Uh, but we have heard from the EPA that they're still not they're still not satisfied because we still have CSO discharges when we have very mm -hmm. intense rain, rains. And uh, so we continue to work with them to figure out if there are other uh, affordable options rather than do separation. Uh, separation is, is a very costly venture. Okay, thank you. Alderwoman Karen. Thank you. Um, I was gonna ask the same question, but uh, does this include the paving afterwards? Um, Cost. This particular street was uh, came about because it was on the paving list, and um, when we have the inner city streets with the old sewers, we look at the sewer, and, the, and we discover that this sewer was in bad shape. So what this will do, it will pay for any paving that the paving program would not have had to do. Okay. So in, in this case, the paving program will come back and put a finishing layer. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Could you talk about the um, 
you said you broke it up into pieces. I'm just interested in what the other pieces are, and are there other 1,900-year-old sewers that we're going to be replacing? Yeah. Um, typically, the sewers that we find ourselves replacing are of that vintage. Um, we have another contract that we awarded maybe a, a month ago, I believe it was, uh, for Kinsley Street. Mm -hmm. And that work will be starting um, soon. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so that was the first one. This is the second one. And we may get in another small one to fit within the current budget. Um, we do have the fiscal year 19 appropriations now, so we will go into that into that budget to start developing uh, sewer replacement programs. In addition to just the replacement, we um, there are pipes that can be relined. Um, so you're not digging up the street to that extent, and you can do a lining project. So some of those in the Kinsley Street project that was awarded, that's part lining and part excavation for replacement. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion passes. Alderwoman <coughs> Kelly. Communication from Dan Kukin, Purchasing Manager, regarding the 2018 paving, pro paving program with a change order number one with a value of $50,000. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept place on file and approve the change order to the contract with Newport Construction and the amount of $50,000. Source of funding is Department 160 Administration Engineering Bond. And Mr. Duquesne, why don't you explain what the change order would be? Yes. So, thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> this one has to do with the paving program, and the change order is for increased flagger rates, uh, the money that we pay for flagging and traffic control. Um, what happened is that when we put out the bid, we used the um, costs that we had last year, and that was essentially $22 an hour to have a flagger on site. And um, as the contractor... Uh, and others tried to get flaggers this year. Um, the only companies that are giving, are providing flaggers at a much higher rate, um, essentially around 22, no, $28, I think, twenty-eight fifty an hour. So a significant increase. And um, when we went to the Board of Public Works, it was asked, uh, you know, if they put in a bid at $22, why are they sticking to the, why can't they just do the job for $22 an hour? Um, actually, it's not a bid item, it's an allowance we put in the contract. Uh, we put so many dollars, I think we did put in like a $50,000 or so um, into the contract, and they, it's, so they draw from that. So regardless of the cost, they just draw down from that $50,000. So this change or is to, to add to that allowance, uh, and therefore the contractor is is not hooked to the fifty dollar, um, the twenty two dollars an hour. Alderman Laws. So I'm, I'm, thank you for that explanation. I was actually concerned when I saw this earlier because I mean, it very obviously looks like they took fifty thousand dollars divided by twenty eight and a half dollars an hour and came up with this seventeen hundred fifty four point three nine hours. So. <clears throat> I did the math out, and twenty-eight fifty is thirty percent more than twenty-two dollars, and then it follows, you know, time and a half, double time, same thing, thirty percent. So thirty percent of a hundred thousand dollars, which was our original allotment, would have been thirty thousand dollars, and so there's twenty thousand dollars more in it. And I was a little concerned because I feel like we have an obligation to explain that. But if they're drawing down from it, does that mean if they don't spend that fifty thousand dollars? The citizens get it back. It goes back into our budget. Yes, we, we got to keep it. Um, and I, I didn't say exactly why we experienced the high rates. It's it's because of the economy. Um, I guess it's tough to find qualified flaggers, so they, they're demanding their price. I, I think that's what's happening. All right, but but yes, it does go back into our. It does go back. And who's responsible for reporting those hours? Is it the company or is it? Yeah. Yes, the company um, invoices us, but we also have people in the field, inspectors, um, you know, who are there to, to measure uh, the amount of work being provided by the flagging company. Alderwoman Harriet Gaffrey. Thank you. 
Okay, the amount is $100,000, just so you guys know. And um, my question was, do we have flaggers in the city? You know, we have employees as flaggers? No, just curious. Uh, no, know? the answer is no. 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 Well, you know, so the public time, works. So every time we see someone holding those flags out there, they belong to some other company. They're not city employees or anything like that. Correct. Unless you see police officers who are city employees. Yeah. But when they're in that type of role, that's a detail paid for by the private company, not by the city. So on a, on a major road, you have police, in, like on Concord Street. They have some flaggers, but they have also have at least one police officer. And um, that is like a situation where, you know, the, the officer volunteers to do this in his or her off hours. It might not even be from Nashua. Sometimes they can't find a Nashua cop who wants to do a job, and they get paid. Uh, uh, they get paid by the city, but the city is reimbursed by the contractor for those hours. I'm just thinking ahead. You know, um, do you think it's worth the city having those types of employees? Well, no, because it's you know it's very very seasonal. So. Yeah. Um, I think it's just very involved to get, you know, then we are subject to a lot of restrictions that, you know, we would prefer not to be subject to. Okay. Thank you. For temporary employees, which then could become permanent and very involved. Um, yes, anyone else? And that's an all-in rate, you know, like we, with a city where there'd be health care, there's pensions, there's, you know, everything else. So um, $28 would become $56. Um, no other questions, comments? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion passes. Um, Alderwoman Kelly. Communication from Dan Kukin, Purchasing Manager, regarding vegetation removal, Merrimack River, with a value of $42,750. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept place on file and award the contract to William P. Davis Excavating, LLC, in the amount of $42,750. Funds are available in Department 169, Wastewater. Any discussion, questions? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? A motion passes. Alderwoman Kelly. Communication from Dan Kukin, Purchasing Manager, regarding Canal Street Bridge Improvements, Bridge Engineering Services, with a value of $42,543. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept place on file and award the contract to CLD Fuss and O'Neill in the amount of $42,543. dollars Source of funding is Department 161 Streets, Capital Improvements, Bridge Rehabilitation Program. Um, Mr. Ducran is here on questions on this item if you have them. This is just for the reconstruction of the red, red listed Canal Street Bridge. It's part of the project. We've budgeted money to design an improvement and then execute uh, a rehab of the bridge. Alderwoman Karen. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, is Hudson sharing some of this cost, or is it just our side of the, the bridge? That this is the one by um, BAE. It's not the uh, Hudson. Oh, it's the other one. Okay. Yeah. Too many bridges. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So this is ours. <laughs> okay. Hopefully the this is over the Nashua River, yeah. not the Merrimack. We we one one That's a whole other issue. Yeah. yeah. We don't want that one to fall on the red list. No, thank yes. you. Okay. <laughs> so. Anything else? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Um, opposed? The motion passes. Alderwoman Kelly. Communication from Dan Cook and Purchasing Manager regarding WWTF HVAC upgrades, change order number four, with a value of $17,940. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept place on file and approve change order number four to the contract with Monadnock Building Company and the amount of $17,940. 
I think Fun. you've... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. Funds are available in Department 169 Wastewater. Go ahead. Um, I think you've met Mr. Boucher before, who's the superintendent of the wastewater treatment plant. Um, do you want to take a moment to explain this change order? Uh, sure. Thank you. Um, this is the ongoing HVAC upgrade nearing the end. Uh, this change order is a result of an inspection from the building inspector in the fire department. Uh, it took place after, it was realized after the bid had gone out, so this is not included in the original bid. Uh, this is for extra smoke detectors needed within the duct work, two extra. And they have to be addressable, so they have to be, each smoke detector has to be routed back to the fire alarm panel of the main entrance. And, uh, because of the distance where the smoke detectors are located, uh, the price is elevated. But this is to meet code. Any questions? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion passes. Alderwoman Kelly. Communication from Dan Kukin, purchasing manager, regarding combined sewer overflow monitoring program with a value of $56,100. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept place on file and award the contract to flow assessment in the amount of $56,100. Source of funding is Department 169 Wastewater. This is a company that uh, we want to have on board. They already have their equipment installed in all of our combined sewer overflow locations. Uh, what this company does is they take all the data that's collected each month, they compile it into a report that we have to submit to the regulatory agencies. And uh, we'd like to continue with their service. We've been happy with it for another year. So this is a one-year contract. And those reports to the EPA and to DES are mandatory? Correct. Yes. Uh, discussion? Questions? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Alderwoman Kelly. Communication from Dan Cook and Purchasing Manager regarding secondary clarifier returned acerbated sludge tubes with a value of 62812 Mr. Mayor, I move to accept place on file and approve the purchase from Evoqua. Water, te wet water Technologies in the amount of $62,812. Funds are available in Department 169 Wastewater. So this is for the purchase of uh, piping and also for a company to come in and install the piping and one of three of our clarifiers. So the purchase is for the piping for three clarifiers, but this company will install it in one, show us how it's installed, and then staff will install it in the other two. Uh, but we have equipment in these clarifiers that currently doesn't work. Uh, so this is some newer technology that will work in order for, to remove sludge from the bottom of the tanks and deliver it to another location at our facility. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Alderwoman Kelly. Communication from Dan Cook and Purchasing Manager regarding purchase of po polymer with a value of $400,000. $400, um, Mr. Mayor, I move to accept place on file and approve the purchase from SNF Polydyne, Inc. in the amount of $400,000. Source of funding is Department 169 wait, was, Wastewater. And, of course, this is just one of the chemicals that's used to clean the water. Yeah, correct. Any questions? Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> the motion passes. Alderwoman Kelly. Communication from Dan Cook and Purchasing Manager regarding the purchase of sodium bisulfite. 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 Bisulfite, right? Bisulfite. You're trying to trip me today. You obviously weren't a chemistry <laughs> manager. Clearly. <laughs> the value is $53,500. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept place on file and approve the purchase from PVC Chemical Solutions in the amount of $53,500. Funds are available in Department 169 Wastewater. Discussion? Buy sulfide. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, now give me the give me the chemical formulation for that. You know the symbol. Mm -mm. No. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Boucher can probably do. Dating agent. <laughs> the sodium is. Oh, All no. those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed. The motion passes. Alderman Kelly. Now we have another pronunciation test coming up. Great. Communication from Dan Kukin, purchasing manager, regarding the purchase of sodium hypochlorite. Very with good. a value of two hundred thousand dollars. Thank you. Sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I move to accept, place on file, and approve the purchase from Univar USA Inc. in the amount of two hundred thousand dollars. Source of funding is Department One Sixty Nine Wastewater. Discussion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes. Alderwoman Kelly. Communication from Dan Kukin, purchasing manager, regarding purchase of flame arresters with a value of $19,329. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept, place on file, and approve the purchase from New England Energy Services Co. in the amount of $19,329. Funds are available in Department 169, Wastewater. And why don't you tell us what flame arresters are? Uh, so we have a digester complex at the wastewater plant, uh, and there's two tanks that produce methane gas and another gas storage tank. Each of these tanks have flame arresters on it uh, to prevent if there was ever a, a flame outside the tank, it can't go back into the tank and, and ignite. Uh, these flame arresters over time uh, get clogged and have to be replaced. Uh, so we want to have NISCO, New England Energy Services Corp come in. They've already done one for us uh, that was needed because uh, the gas wasn't regulated in the system. So this company will come in and do all the others. And the, unfortunately, uh, not a lot of people sell the flame arresters that uh, we need is coming direct from the company. So we're just hiring this other company to come in and install it for us because they're rather large and out of the capability of our staff. Discussion? <laughs> Questions? <laughs> um, I was just interested. So you're replacing them completely. How long of a life do we get out of the less? Uh, you can get a long life out of it if you uh, remove them and clean them. Unfortunately, these have been in so long there. They've gone beyond that, at that point of cleaning. And we know this from the one that we just exchanged. But so you, you can get quite a long life out of them. And... and we will have it on a maintenance program now. We. Okay. <laughs> you got me. Good. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Alderwoman Kelly. Communication from Dan Kukin, purchasing manager, regarding FY19 Sanborn Head Associations Associate, Associates, wow, Engineering Services, landfill, with a value not to exceed $80,000. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept place on file and award the contract to Sanborn Head and Associates in the amount of not to exceed $80,000. Source of funding is Department 168, Solid Waste. And we have Mr. LaFleur, who's the uh, head of the landfill. So um, what, uh, tell us what the engineering services are. Yes, sir. They, they um, we, we hire this company. It's our landfill company. They, they specialize in landfills. Uh, it's the same company that we've been working with for over seven to ten years now. Um, they take care of all our air permit applications. They take care of all that. They take care of our financial assurance. They take care of uh, any anomalies that come, happen up at the landfill that have to do with landfills and work with the DES with us. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion passes. Alderwoman Kelly. Communication from Dan Kukin, Purchasing Manager, regarding three-year water quality testing and monitoring at Nashua Landfill Sites contract award, with a value not to exceed $104,190. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept, place on file, and contingent upon Board of Aldermen approval, award the contract to ChemServe Environmental Analysts in the amount of $104,190. Funds are available in Department 168, Solid Waste. And this will go to the Board of Aldermen because it's a contract beyond one year. So that will this, if 
recommended by this committee would go to will go to the next meeting of the Board of Aldermen. Um, maybe just tell us uh, briefly what the services are. Yes, sir. The um, ChemServe goes around to all our closed landfills and our our landfill at 840 West Hollis Street. They test all our groundwater, make sure that we're all within compliance, see if there's any anomalies. Um, there, we're also, it's a little bit higher this year because we have to start doing the PFAS, uh, and the PFOAs, the great chemicals that was found throughout the state now, we're having to test for that, so that's a little bit higher testing rate. Um, Three-year contract, it just makes it easier on all of us. I have to do the testing yearly, so I figured let's go out for a three-year contract so we don't have to come back yearly and bother you nice folks at night. Okay. Alderwoman Kelly. Uh, thank you, Ms. Mayor. Does extending it for three years give us any savings by locking in a certain rate with them? Typically, yes. Um, but again, with dealing with DES, if any of the changes happen, I have to you know, do a change order to it. It hasn't happened in a few years, but like I said, this past year we had the PFAS and the PFOAs come in. I have to expect that. But yes, typically three-year contracts, I get better pricing on all that. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Alderwoman Kelly. Communication from Dan Kukin, Purchasing Manager, regarding three-year air quality and landfill gas testing, Shandy Lane Landfill, and New Searles School Contract. Award um, with the value not to exceed $53,433. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept place on file and contingent upon Board of Aldermen approval, award the contract to TRC Environmental Corporation in the amount not to exceed $53,433. Source of funding is Department 168 Solid Waste. Questions, comments? Alderman O'Brien. Thank you. <clears throat> I seem to remember this was a big hot button issue with the people of Ward 9 several years ago. <clears throat> so to follow up on that, I imagine you shared the results of this testing with the school department, correct, that they know exactly. So if anybody at home they know that the school department is on top of it as well and they know that the quality for the new school, school is, the air quality is at, you know, with yes, inadequacy. Um, yeah, all, all the records are all open to the public. In fact, when we d download it to DES, it's on one stop, so anyone in the U.S. can go on there and bring it up and take a look at it. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion passes. Thank uh, you. Alder Alderwoman Kelly, thank you very much. And I think we have Mr. Ibarra here for the last two items. We have a communication from Dan Kukin, Purchasing Manager, regarding the purchase of one 2019 rampant 20 ton ramp trailer with a 24 foot flat deck and a six foot dovetail with eight foot hydraulic ramps with a value of 20,213. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I move to accept place on file and award the contract to Rampant Trailers LLC in the amount of $20,213. Funds are available in Department 160 Engineering Highway Block Grant. Discussion questions or questions? <clears throat> Alderman O'Brien. Yes, it sounds like a wonderful trailer, but uh, who's got to get it and what's it going to be used for? Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be used primarily for our mill and fill program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to streamline that program, gain us some efficiencies in the equipment moves. We'll be able to put a roller and a paver and a bobcat on the same trailer instead of doing three separate moves. Mm -hmm. So we should get a little more done in a day. Outstanding. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to all of us, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Money well spent. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Alderwoman Kelly. Communication from Dan Kukin, Purchasing Manager, regarding the purchase of one Johnson vacuum air sweeper with a value of $259,100. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept, place on file, and approve the purchase from Sanitary Equipment Company, Inc. in the amount of $259,100. Source of funding is Department 161 Street, SURF. And of course, this is a street sweeper, obviously. Any discussion or questions on this item? 
Uh, Alder Woman Karen. Thank you. So you're getting rid of the 2007. It's not being traded in. It's it's it, going to be traded in. It will be traded in. Oh. We have another one coming up in this fiscal budget. Oh, okay. As well, it's in the CERT program. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Thank you. Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we now have unfinished business, none, new business, none, record of expenditures. Mr. Mayor, I move that the Finance Committee has complied with the City Charter and ordinances pertaining to the record of expenditures for the period from June 15th, 2018 to June 30th, 2018. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. General discussion. Does anybody have any general discussion items? I do have one, which is this. Um, some of the departments, I just wanted to get your reaction, which you don't have to give now. I just want to th mention this issue, think about it. Um, the um, Some of the departments, well, right now, what you see on this agenda, and the Board of Public Works sees the same items, are any expenditures or contracts above $10,000. So if it's 9000 it's not on here, on the theory that it is a, you know, compared with the, the more major purchases, it's relatively small, and therefore, uh, you know, doesn't come here. Now, some of the departments, particularly Public Works, have suggested that we raise the threshold because they say, and you can hear it from them directly if you wish, um, my phone is for some reason taking down Sorry. this. It's I'm transcribing this. I don't know why. <laughs> um, it uh, um, <clears throat> takes a lot of person hours to put all these packets together. Uh, some of these items are small. Sometimes it's a commodity, and they would like to raise the threshold to twenty-five thousand dollars instead of ten, which means obviously on this agenda, three of the items on a twenty-five thousand um, dollar threshold would not have been on the agenda. There's a couple for around uh, nineteen, seventeen, and one for twenty thousand um, dollars. Their other argument is the $10,000 has been in place for a long time and has been kind of eroding over, you know, as a result of inflation, as $10,000 doesn't buy what it used to, you know, that type of thing. Anyway, um, I, you know, if the threshold were to be raised, this is an ordinance, so it would be require uh, aldermanic action. So obviously all members of the Board of Aldermen would have votes on it. And since they've mentioned it to me a couple of times, I thought I'd raise it with you and see if you have any thoughts now. But it doesn't have to be now. It could be later. This is not urgent. Yes, Alderman Laws. How long has the $10,000 threshold been in existence? Um, we're looking into that, but it's at least 10 years, I think. Ten years. I can yes. actually, oh. it was 2002. Right. It was 15000 at one point and got lowered back down to 10000 in 2002. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the other argument Public Works makes is that they've checked with other communities and that more typically there is a threshold of 25. I don't know why it was lowered. I guess more scrutiny by the aldermen, right? Yeah. Hmm. It's probably um, a, maybe it was Mr. Thiebaud, one of his reforms. I don't know. <laughs> yes. If I may, um, I've got quite a bit of data on this. We've done comparisons with Manchester and Concord and where they're at, where we're at. I can email those to the group if, if you'd like those. I also have like one of the spreadsheets that we've done. Uh, I have copies. I can email those uh, tomorrow. But it gives you a breakdown, like percentages. Uh, we'd actually probably reduce the volume of items by 30 percent, but would only reduce the amount of dollars you're seeing by two to four percent. That, that's very near and near a little bit, but not a terrible lot. Thank you. Now, if you do email the entire committee, could you make sure that the communication appears on the agenda of the next committee meeting so that we're not privately communicating yes. about issues of substance? Mm -hmm. 
So if it's a commu so if you send it, let's put it as a communication on here and just accept it, and everybody will be able to see what has been sent. Everybody, meaning the public and the other aldermen. Uh, alderman Laws. So I, I'm, I've got no problem personally with doing this, especially if it's pretty standard for other municipalities to do it this way. My, my main concern would be that I feel like we're standing on the precipice of a cliff right now, and at the bottom are going to be a bunch of angry people with pitchforks once this tax revaluation comes out. And if we start making it easier for government to spend money without being held accountable for it, I feel like people are going to riot in the streets. That's, that's my concern, personally. I mean, it, I think maybe now, it, uh, again, I'm in support of the idea, but maybe now isn't the time to do it. Maybe we should wait until, you know, the blood is dried a little bit before we start. You're using such uh, <laughs> okay. colorful <laughs> language. <laughs> If, if I'm really dramatic, then it takes, you know, a little bit of the wind out of their sails. <laughs> um, anyone else have any thoughts that you wish to express at this time? Uh, Alderwoman Karen. Thank you. Um, John, I remembered when we had the threshold brought up because we didn't have to do some of these things, especially for Park Rec. Um, maybe, and I... Alderman Laws makes a valid point, but maybe we need to think about maybe just a small increase, you know, going to 15,000 or something like that, just so people don't think we're out of control. But I think I'd like to see the communication of other, you know, communities like our size and see where it goes. But you're right, because they're in here for such minute things, $10,000, and a lot of it is repair things. Yeah. You know, so which is every day, which is every day um, work for our department. Alderman Laws. Well, perhaps uh, what would be what what would ten thousand dollars be adjusted for inflation over the last sixteen years? I actually have that. I believe be I feel like that'd be a fair compromise. You know, it'd be much easier to to agree to something like that with the community and say, listen, this is just this is the way it is. Right. You know. Ten's now fourteen. Well, that doesn't really do much. No. Anyone else? Alderwoman Kelly. Um, thank you. I would ask the members of the board that were here: Do we remember what the circumstances were around bringing it up to fifteen and then bringing it back? That's just my question. Do you I wasn't on the board. I wasn't here at the time. I wasn't even there. <laughs> I mean, I can guess it was just somebody wanted more oversight. Mm -hmm. I don't. Were you were you on the board then? No, right? No, I wasn't. Yeah. I I think I was probably still working when when they change. You know, when they changed it, and I th it, and you're right. Some of it was. Uh, I'm sorry to say, it's micromanaging. Mm -hmm. You know, and departments have to do their day to day job. So, if you're looking at a ten thousand dollar repair cost and you have to wait two weeks for approval from finance it's holding up it's holding up their work schedule and i'm sure you alderman o'brien you've had that same situation in the fire department fire exactly mm -hmm. yeah i mean this uh if i may mr mayor yeah, uh, i think this would be uh more efficiency in government you know at i think we exist as a board we still provide the oversight it's not like we're going anywhere, we'll still be able to monitor to see exactly what each division is particularly doing. This just raises it so less paperwork. It will actually probably benefit. The employees won't be coming, filling out all the stock and get prepared for our meeting. So it'll probably increase it on their end, their efficiency. So it could even be a cost-saving issue to some degree mm -hmm. where you're not coming up and filing before the board. But uh, I would recommend at least going back to 15 as an easy start you know what I mean? Uh, Seem to be comfortable where we were there before, and if it works good, we can go even higher. You know what I mean? Go to the twenty-five, uh, but twenty-five is not a bad. Uh, you know, today I just ran some numbers on the inflation calendar, and things are more money today, so it, it makes sense to raise it at this particular game. I mean, one of the arguments they make is as 
just stated by Alderman O'Brien, which is that actually putting all these memos together and explaining every purchase and then doing it twice, at least for public works, because they do this at the Public Works Board and at the Finance Committee, <clears throat> that this is a lot of person hours put into getting a $10,000 item approved. I mean, it, you know, probably is multiple hours, person hours to get you know, uh, something that's like one one hundredth of one percent of the budget approved. So that's kind of part of their argument. I'm not, didn't do the math on the one hundredth of one percent, but. Uh, tenth of a percent, yes. So I'll reiterate where I'm at. I completely agree with Alderman O'Brien and Alderman Karen. I think that it probably, there's probably a, far more unintended consequences that are going to benefit the city as a result of this than the alternative. Again, the, the only concern I have is just the optics of it. And I, I know there's, I, unfortunately, not as many people watch these meetings as would probably benefit the city. And uh, so all it takes is just one person to be like, well, Board of Aldermen, raising your property taxes and and now they're, now they're trying to make it so they can spend more money without you knowing about it, you know? And then, so it's just a matter of how we package this. We have to be completely open. We should, I, mean, I think we should put something in the paper about it, to be honest with you. Just make sure people know what's happening so it doesn't look like we're trying to slide something in on them, you know? That should, that should be my concern. If this does happen, it, would, it will require that an ordinance be introduced, that it go to a committee yep. and all that. Anyway. Um, does that mean that there's a public hearing on it as well? There could be. But there certainly would be a committee meeting, and there could, you know, any committee can hold a public hearing on anything, you know, if they want to. Um, all right, that's probably enough, unless anybody's got any. Um, all right, we just wanted to get general feedback. Uh, public comment. Oh, we did that. We did that already, right? Uh, remarks by, and there's no members of the public. Uh, remarks by aldermen. Any do any aldermen have remarks? All right. Uh, Alderman O'Brien. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 And the meeting is adjourned at 7.42 p.m. <laughs>